Hey everybody, it's Steve. And so today I'm going to be coming to you to do my review of the Death Team and talk about them when it comes to the Splinterlands. This is a follow-up to all the other reviews that I've been doing on the different teams. Obviously, I can tell the more popular teams is Water and Life got the most views. And... Um, no, I'm sorry, Water and Earth, and then Life and Fire got the least, but Fire was up there pretty high as well, really because Yoden's so powerful. And now we're getting into the Death Team, and I saved them for the last of the regular ones before Dragon because, well, that's where they were in the le in the in the in the list of teams. If you just go left to right, but they are not one of the stronger teams in the game. So this is something that's kind of interesting to talk about: is that the um, the death team is just not that strong and this is just the truth i have a hard time questing with them when i'm using them uh you they don't fit into a lot of the different formats of the game their abilities aren't quite as devastating as other ones and even times where you think you've taken full control of the game you lose and your team tends to be slower than you expected it to be and just they don't have as much hp as you'd like them to have it's just kind of an interesting team and it's one of the one teams that i hope gets actually a lot of buff in the next set maybe they'll get their first summoner that gives their team a boost instead of taking something away from the other team uh, maybe some stuff will get changed to make them a little bit more competitive that being said there are some death teams lineups and situations where they are the best team they are the most dominant option and they will completely dominate a team when they win but it doesn't always work and i have some battle examples to show you so let's talk about the summoners here we'll talk first about the main three cost summoners Real, real, realistically these guys are all really really close to each other and just it comes down to certain situations where they'll be a little bit stronger so in a no mage match you might want contessa because obviously there's probably going to be more archers on the board on malay only super sneak um monsters mayhem or maybe just a, a, a team that you think is going to play a lot of melee, then maybe you want Zintar instead. And if you're in any format where no archers are allowed, well, then maybe you want your whole team to bounce magic back. Or if you're in no abilities at all, you might want to give your team mana bounce back. Same thing in that format. You might want to just give them void if it's high mana, but it depends on the mana cap. Uh, the two cost summoners only really needed if you're going to be trying to sneak him in in... Uh, silent summoner matches or if you're going to try to compete in uh, the highest of leagues but on the death team he's not super important um, that's why he's a little bit cheaper when it comes to these older epic cards mimosa is a little bit cheaper really because affliction is really really awesome but it's cleansable and there's a lot of different cards that have cleanse out there in the game including the llama who pretty much came out to defy mimosa <laughs> It was like, oh, you're going to make it so my team that's really good at healing can't heal. Well, nah, forget that. <laughs> I'm going to just cleanse that away. So uh, Cryptmancer is actually kind of a fun card. He's an interesting one because he gives the minus one health, minus one speed, and minus one to monsters attack. You can really build him in with some weakened and then even give your cards... Um, the, the ability that lets them pop and do one damage to the other team. And if you've weakened them enough with a couple weakens and his minus one health, you might wipe out another team. It's kind of a funny different thing. Now, obviously, your budget's going to depend where you go here. But honestly, I don't think if you're someone coming into the game looking to spend a lot of money and dominate that you're really going to come into the death team right away. They're really good in bronze. So it's a real good team to use in bronze because these cards tend to be cheaper because they're not as competitive in the upper leagues. Because death isn't as competitive in the upper leagues, that's why the prices stay down a little bit. And then you can use them in, let's say, bronze and silver. And they are competitive there because they do have a really good tank with a self heal. And that's very important when you're competing in bronze and silver. So um, Mimosa, I'll just counter like one more time. She came out. She was the second legendary summer to come out. She was really good. And then Zaku came out. Llama came out. Biz and Kitty came out. And you were like, wow, okay, she's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say that she's the second worst of the seven cost legendary summoners right behind um, the one for water. He's currently probably the worst and only able to be used in very, very certain situations because the, and then after that, it would probably go Chanceus and then Llama, Yoden and Bizzing Kitty are all the top three. Yoden being the best probably and definitely the best for lower leagues. Uh, having that splash damage in the beginning is just devastating. Uh, also having the plus one to range. Now, minus one to range and anti-healing and void just it's OK in the beginning. 
if you use a mimosa and they don't have like if you want to have a legendary summoner so you can use one in a high mono match because you're running into a lot of people who don't even have one she'll win you a match because a seven cost summoner is going to beat a three cost summoner in a 50 mono match almost all the time almost all the time now that being said she she doesn't work out as good as you can and the overall theme of death is obviously weaken the other team prevent the other team from being able to heal and go ahead and um defeat them that way because you've weakened them so now your monsters that might be a little bit weaker than their monsters before they got debuffed are much much stronger than theirs so we're going to go ahead and get into the monsters now um like i said really it's just your budget and your feel uh the best of these three uh, in actuality for gameplay especially in the lower ones might be uh the magic reflect because being able to bounce back magic in the beginning is pretty devastating and the minus one attack and minus one archery you can do with other creatures on your team so you don't always need that um, but you can't give them magic reflect so this might be one worth looking into while he's still pretty cheap now we'll go ahead and go into the monsters we'll hide the summoners so first we'll talk about the haunted spirit the haunted spirit is the card that you need to compete in bronze and silver at a level that is wherever you want to be at um, and it's because he has a self heal and self heal in bronze and silver is very important and very good just like flesh golem is very important for the earth team he is the key guy with self heal for this team and he's really the only real suitable tank for your 25 to 30 mana and lower matches because there's just nobody else on the team that is very good at that um the the dark heron here he he's kind of an interesting card at 10 mana he has taunt taunt can be very important to kind of control where they're attacking but he doesn't get shield or void at these lower levels he doesn't have a self heal and the team does not have a healer in bronze or silver that you can even get there isn't even one to use so you're not going to be able to heal this tank and he costs tw twice as much as the haunted spirit he doesn't have twice as much health exactly uh, he doesn't do twice as much damage he does the same so realistically you only need this card is usable in certain situations but it's not that much better unless you're going to get him leveled up so that he gets void once he has void he becomes really good once he has void and magic reflect he becomes pretty a lot better but uh, and and he does need scavenge scavenger does allow him to kind of heal in an indirect way uh, especially because this team is very very low on healers the only healer that they have is very expensive and that's the corrupted pegasus and he is not an untamed set card so he's going to go away so hopefully in chaos legion they get their first legitimate just regular healer but you can he doesn't even heal until level three so see there isn't a level uh, a bronze or silver really level usable healer on the entire team as you go through here on level one you'll see there is nobody here who has a self heal so or has a tank heal now there are some monsters here with life leech um, there's some monsters here with affliction at low levels so that they can stop the other team from healing and they have a really good one here in the grim reaper at low level that can help you so if you have a haunted spirit and the grim reaper out on the board you're going to be able to heal they're not going to be able to heal if you get your affliction off and that's going to put you in a big advantage now you will see their speeds are just not that super impressive they have a two here this one's a two uh, this nine cost guy that's pretty pretty fun to have for high amount of matches he's only a one uh, in speed he does get true st strike but later on so you're gonna have lots of missing on this team unless you slow the other team down so this is one of the few teams where I would say you really 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 do need to play cards that slow the other team down quite a bit now they have some good ones they have the boogeyman and the undead priest at higher levels that will slow the other team down but if you do not do some things to slow the other team down and bring them into your level of speed you're going to have some trouble the other cards that are really important in the set are really the ones that do crowd control and i'm going to start off with the phantom soldier he is a really good eight cost mage that has a silence he doesn't get the silence right away though not to level three but a level three uh, epic i believe that's usable in silver let me double check if that's usable in silver leagues silver epics at three yeah so at level three he would have a silence and he'd be able to help you silence the other team oops i went into my collection i'm gonna have to set this back up really quick guys i don't usually do that sorry 
death monsters. Okay. The other ones that are pretty important at higher levels are the Storm Soul. The Storm Soul is important because like the other one that I was showing you had a silence at level three. Oh, he doesn't get his until level four. So he's not really important unless you're competing in higher than silver because right there he, get head, he gets his headwinds. One of the other cards that can do some of the uh, controlling the other team that's not that expensive. Sorry, it's always kind of interesting when you uh, can't find the monster you want to show people. It's the, I, and I forgot his name. <laughs> Sorry, just give me one moment to find this card. There's just too many. He's the other eight cost card. So I should just be looking at... Oh, there he is, the Octospider. So Octospider's pretty cool, because even at level one, he does a Demoralize. This is one of the reasons why I said uh, Zinta... Oh, no, that's level four. Sorry. I, for some reason, they're showing a level four for sale, not a level one. Okay, so here. So the Octus Spider does get demoralized, though, and he gets it at level three, so that's usable very in the low leagues. And once he has demoralizer, then he can be combined with a Condessa, and then you're doing minus one to Malay and minus one to the different... Uh, to the melee monsters and the ranged monsters in that combo. This is one of the reasons why I said Zentar isn't as important because they do have some different cards that gets that. This card is very important if you're going to be playing in the higher leagues because it does end up getting demoralized and headwind. So it can so you can see how you can very easily end up using cards in this team to give the other team either minus three to ranged attack, minus three, to, minus two or minus three to melee attack. You can also see that they have a couple different cards that can silence. The Phantom Soldier can silence. They also have these uh, three cost mage here. The Death Elemental can silence. So you see, you can kind of figure out what you think your opponent will be playing and then build your team to try to counter their team. One of the reasons the death team doesn't win a lot, though, is because if you guess wrong, let's say I play all headwinds lineup and you play no archers, you play mages instead, well, then I'm not debuffing anybody and I'm probably going to lose. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this team is in the beginning, they were the one of the few teams who had poison and poison is really powerful, but in the newer sets, <coughs> they didn't get more cards that poison. And so this one, the Haunted Spider and the Stealth Assassin, they can both do poison, and that can be really, really devastating once you get them that ability and if they land it. But it doesn't really play into a te in, into the game until later on because, see, they don't get poison until level 6. And then they didn't get any other new cards that can poison, so that's really, really dis disheartening. They are a pretty solid team for reverse speed if you go ahead and pick up a few cards. The Ancient Lich is amazing in reverse speed, attacks first with 3 magic mana and has a life leech on him that that allows him in the right position to maybe hit the row or the front row with like 15 16 health and be a big three magic uh, hitting tank at the end of the game also they have the um their big 12 11 cost card uh, is one speed and he stays one speed so they can uh, go ahead and play those two together i mean it's only high mana reverse speed that that really works but then if you put them on the board you know with like haunted spirits only a two they have a couple other cards here that are only twos and so they'll attack pretty early they only have a couple cards that end up pretty fast you have this one here and actually that's kind of a detriment because he's a one magic one health card always and so he kills himself a lot that's why he's best to be played with Mimosa so that he can't kill himself or you need to play him with a card that adds additional HP to him so he doesn't kill himself. The Corrupted Pregasus adds an HP to the team at higher levels and so does the Shadowy Presence. So those are the cards that you'd be looking to play with him to make sure a Magic Reflect just doesn't make him instantly at the very first move of the game with 6 speed. He might attack first, kill himself, and then his debuffs go away. So <laughs> it's almost kind of interesting. If you're playing reverse speed, you can kind of sneak him in sometimes knowing, well, at least he won't kill himself until the end of the game or the end of the first turn if they have a magic reflect. Um, let's see. Let's just talk about some of the cards that are pretty cool right now. The Dark Ferryman is, is a really strong card with only three cost. You have another card here. Let's talk about the, the low cost cards that are really good. So you have the Badger, who's a sneaker with only two. The Ferryman, who's a three cost, who can get three attack at high level. So a three for three is really strong. You have the Spider, which is three cost and has two attack. 
And then you have the Skeletal Warrior. Now, he's not good until he gets his shield and his 3 HP right here. This is the first time he becomes playable at level 5. So you're going to ignore him in the lower levels. And you're just going to go ahead and play Haunted Spirit even in those you know 15-ish mana matches. Because you're just going to play him. And then behind him, you're going to put in some of these low-cost 2 and 3 attackers to go ahead and try to play. Um the the bone golem i don't really use him you could use him in reverse speed as your tank because he is a one cost but he's just not gonna outbeat the uh the the self heal of the golem uh of the haunted spirit until he gets into higher levels and he has his his repair and he has void and so then you could play him when you're kind of expecting magic from the other team but you can give Haunted Spirit Void with your Mimosa, so it's it's kind of a th situation where Haunted Spirit could be self-healing, magic reflecting, voiding with underneath the Mimosa play, and he's then he's just blowing the Bone Golem away. But he is a playable card in reverse speed. He is a cheaper tank. Um, some of the other kind of interesting cards at lower levels are the Undead Priest, because he gets a, a attack, a debuff, a weaken, and he gets a slow as you level him up they aren't a very good sniper team the twisted jester really was uh, an alpha card that came out when teams were kind of small and just having one fast uh sniper on your team was pretty cool but he never got enough backup on the team to be a real sniper focused team there's only one other card that snipers on the death team and it is going to be this one here, the Death Elemental, who's a magic sniper. So they don't even work that well together because they're not both magic. It works okay, but if the if the if the, if the uh, target has let's say you know like four armor or something, well the Death Elemental is going to be pegging off one life. The Twisted Archer is going to be hit running into the armor, never helping the Death Elemental, and then they both might end up dying before they even are able to snipe down one target, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so hopefully the death team i don't know sniping is just not really a format for them they have an okay setup of sneak monsters but they're on the lower end and the smaller side they can play a, sne a sneak a sneak monster team with the stealth assassin and then you throw a you throw the uh, the maggots with uh, opportunity and you throw these guys out there and then you go ahead and take the nine cost sandworm and you put and you punch him into the team and he's a, he's going to help them have one big one big sneak monster with a couple little little sneak monsters and an opportunity monster to go ahead and pick them up later on sorry my telegram chat popped up there um but th this is kind of some of the stuff that i'll show you with the death team again they're kind of built to be a crowd control team now the one a uh, factor that can change that for you is if you have a lord of darkness now i never spent the money to get a leveled up lord of darkness this is kind of because in the beginning of the game i really didn't see how good he could be at the end of the game if you get him to the max level sitting here with 10 health with a stun with a shield with a retaliate and an enrage to take that four attack up another level it's really good and he's one of the cards that actually makes this team a little better and i don't have him so that so forgive me a little bit if that's why to me they seem a little bit weaker than some of the other teams let's go ahead and show you some battle examples and then we're going to wrap this video up i was i was questing with death today it took me a while to get it done as you can see i i was losing quite a bit when i was trying to use the death theme just to get examples i do have an example here of the small team so i'm going to show you that so this was an example of um, a pretty low mono match i'll show you once the rules come up so and it's kind of an interesting fight because this one was really really close let me pause it oops i didn't get the pause off so it's a 15 mana silent summoners and you can see here he played a card that costs seven with a zero a one a three and a ten in the background now i will say that he doesn't have his uh ooze leveled up but that doesn't really matter this isn't leveled up doesn't really matter and these ones are all com pretty competitive levels, either maxed out or very close to being maxed out. So this was a solid team. On my side, though, I paid a chicken, followed up by a two, by a two, by a two, by a three, and a three. So as you can see here, I got the, the uh, Dark Ferryman. He's going to be doing Cripple. I've got the, the Haunted Spider to try to do Poison. I've got the Archer here to do a Shatter and prevent healing. Not an issue here. He doesn't have a healer. Um, and then the Undead Priest to slow them down a little bit. And then I've got this Shielded Tank to kind of hopefully 
just not die before I can go ahead and whittle their people down with all my attacks. Now, the reason why this ended up not being that good is because the um, our, our didn't go as easily as I thought it was going to go is because he made my team extremely slow and his team fast. So as you can see, this first round, I did a lot of missing. And then as we get a little bit further into this, you're going to see that I'm going to go ahead and finally get kind of lucky here as I missed a whole bunch again and now my tank's down and I'm like man I'm in trouble but then I get a hit followed by a hit followed by a hit and that changes the the formatting of this a lot and it's still looking like man I'm just gonna lose miss but then I get a hit uh, very luckily and I drop that first guy and now he doesn't have anybody that can attack with more than one damage so even though I was down to just only two attackers on my team his one little attacking mage is just not going to be enough I'm going to eventually kill him and uh, even though he does take that guy out it takes me down to one as you can see here I'm dealing two damage he's only dealing one I have five HP after the debuff goes away so I'm really only looking to go ahead and try to get him uh, finished off before he gets through this guy. And it worked out, and I won. And so that was an example of one of the, 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 the kind of bigger amount of monsters being able to beat out that one strong monster and them having a lot of answers for any kind of combo. Now, one of the other ones I want to show you is a Mimosa win when it works. So here we go. So here's one where you'll get to see Mimosa actually working. So this was kind of an interesting matchup where Mimosa was able to come in and kind of really just take over the board and not give the other team any kind of chance. This was an interesting lineup he went with. I guess he was just hoping I, I, that these guys would survive the earthquake. It was a higher mana match. Death is pretty good in higher mana matches because they have these 11, 9, uh, 5, 9. So see, you can end up playing a lot of pretty, pretty good cards. We'll speed this up. One of the issues I was going to have is just getting rid of this Serpentine Soldier because he is uh, a kind of a pain in the butt with 7 speed and hard to hit. But I had that big Magic attack, which went ahead and protected me. You can see the Earthquake start popping off here. And then now I'm kind of at the advantage of uh, being able to hopefully... I got a stun in, and that stun really is what saved me because it allowed me to prevent that big six attack from ever getting to swing and then I was able to get rid of him and as you can see I did have an advantage here that my scavenge monster was just getting enough HP to not die from the earthquakes <laughs> this was really one of the closest matches I've ever had it was pretty wild because you see here the earthquake takes that guy out and it, if, it, if he would have got to attack again and heal I would have been in trouble <laughs> But that was, a, that was one match. That doesn't really showcase Mimosa how I really wanted. Let me see if I have another one. Here, this one might be a little bit better. And this will be probably the last one we'll go. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I know maybe this is the best video. I don't know if many people will stick around to watch the matches. But here's an example of beating a team that's really decked out with quite a few cards. I mean, the one thing here is that the epics are a little underleveled, but all his legendaries are, well, this one's a little underleveled too. It doesn't have last stand, but they're still powerful cards. And to mind you, this guy's only level two on my team, so that's kind of an equal thing. But you'll see here, he didn't actually have a cleanse, so my ability to go ahead and play my team in a reverse speed mode in a game where I was able to go ahead and debuff him pretty good and have some debuffs all over the place as you can see his team doesn't have very good attack and then I can prevent him from doing any kind of snipers or damage anywhere else while being able to um, use my mages even though they have a reflect back Mimosa gives them all void so now when that magic comes flying back at them they take far less damage sorry some people in my telegram are going off let me just hide all of that. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and watch this. It was a pretty competitive battle all the way through here in the match. It takes a few rounds. You got the Bizzing Kitty healing because, once again, um, my affliction didn't stay on the board there because he did. Who has the cleanse? Right here. The, uh, the Diamond Dragon. See, somebody always has that cleanse to take that away. 
so that the healing can work. But in the end, basically by debuffing their magic and their ranged attack and their melee attack enough, I was able to make sure that they just wouldn't have enough attack to kill my tank soon enough. And as you can see, I've already gotten through a couple of his different monsters. I've killed another one now. He's down to three, and there's just no way that he's going to be able to kill me. Eventually, I think he does. If I go full speed here, it, it's going to... Um, let me see. Does he even get my guy down? I don't think he does. Nope, he won't, because with one magic damage, he can't kill me. Oh, but he does get a last standoff, but I still don't think he's able to do it. He gets reflected back, but I think I take him out this round. Yeah, and that's it. And that, that gives you an example of how the team can win when you go ahead and debuff the other team and you have the right kind of setup and it works. Now, unfortunately, I would say that as you, if you could look through here, death team, loss, loss, win. Let's see. Loss, loss win loss win loss loss uh win win so it, it goes you know it, it's it's not a dominating team it, it doesn't always work but the one thing i would say about the death team is when it does work it works well and it dominates and you win very easily all right everybody i hope you have a good day and keep playing splinterlands bye